Who's ruined many people's lives the last 20 years? Let's make a list, okay? If we were to say who's ruined many people's lives the last 20 years, uh, we can put FBI there. We can put uh, CIA there. We can put Clintons there. We can put CDC there. We can put NIH there. You know, uh, we can put uh, Fauci. China there. We can put Fauci there. We can put World Economic Forum there. We can put, uh, you, you know, you, know I mean? you, you realize where I'm going with this. Like, I, like I can. You. We can put Biden's family there. We can put uh, McConnell. We can put. We can put so many names sure. on this list, right? Every one of those guys hate Trump. Every one of them hate Trump. Why? Well, um, hmm. Exactly. Yeah, but I don't think it's necessarily because, again, you know, I think, again, the American public, maybe it's Hollywood, for a long time sees things as kind of black and white. Oh, if, you know, all the bad guys are against this guy, he must be good. I don't, I think the real world doesn't really function like that a lot. You know, by the time you get to sort of be, rise to that level to an extent, you have to, you know, have made deals in the past that aren't I don't disagree. You know no, what I, I mean? I don't disagree. And like Trump's yeah. mentor, Roy Cohn, yeah. insanely dirty. Of course. Insanely dirty, yeah. you know? And a lot of, you know, the art of the deal. He Who's Roy Cohn? Is that somebody I need to be doing some research on? I, I, I've never even heard of that person, honestly. Um, yeah, so let me know what I need to know in the comment section, please. He learned that from Cohn, who, you know, and Cohn had learned it from Generoso Pope, who was like this Italian, very close friend of Frank Costello and the guy that ran the cement industry, concrete but, but, industry but, but, in New York. But everybody so, in the... everybody dirty. In, that's what, that's no, what, it's not dirty. I don't, I don't, there's difference no? between... No, there's difference between dirty. No, I disagree. What I'm trying to... Okay, so for example, this is where I'm going with this. To me... Uh, I have a lot of people that you would say are dirty, okay? And somebody could make a very clear argument that these people, based on their past, are dirty, okay? And I've spent a lot of hours with these guys. Mm -hmm. And when I sit down with them and I say, so tell me what happened that one time when da 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 And I go, well, let me tell you what happened. When we were in the room, Paul Castellano, he did this, and then all of a sudden, Gotti said this, and da 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 Oh, wow, okay, yeah. got it. So, hey, when yourself, when you were in this situation and this one guy that was – Robin Banks, we had him on the thing. I'm like, when you were doing this, and why, why did you do this? And how did the bank fall for this? And how were you able to do this? Okay, so how do we defend against that, right? So even right now, for example, you know, the, one of the biggest reasons why Big Pharma is doing what it's doing is take advantage of people in America is because of the patent laws that we have. This whole Hatchman and Wax, I think it's the one of the Allegedly. senator from Utah is a Republican and the other congressman is from California, who's a Democrat. They come together, they lower the, uh, a, 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 the, the, what do you call it, the patent law to 14 years. And then in 1994, under Clinton, they raised it to 20 years. And these uh, uh, insurance companies come out with medication and they can sell it for 20 years patent. Nobody else can compete with them. And the price point, one of the drugs we looked at, uh, Vinny, the price point of what they sold, and then the year when, uh, uh, what do you call it, when the patent expired, Within three years, the price of the medicine dropped 98 and a half percent. Let wow. me say this one more time. Wow. It went from $1,000 to 15 bucks, okay? Because now everybody could compete in the marketplace. Yeah. It was so mm -hmm. you look. I, I, I do agree that some, a lot of these medicines and things are astronomically expensive. Now, most people never truly realize how expensive some of these medicines are because most people have health insurance and, you know, obviously insurance pays the bulk of that cost. But uh, for for folks who, uh, you know, are in a situation where they can't afford health insurance or for whatever reason don't have health insurance, they get to see those true prices. And you look at the prices of some of this stuff and it's just bonkers. Bonkers, which I do think needs to be fixed. I highly doubt Trump will actually address that. I mean, there's so many, there's so many things Uncle Trump is going to have to um, fix during his presidency. I highly doubt he'll ever get to it, but maybe. But that's one of the things that I do think needs to be needs to be fixed. You know, I, I understand. You know, uh, companies making profit, and I'm all for it. I am trust, trust and believe me. I am for folks making some money. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And nobody can ever convince me that it's wrong for somebody to want to make money. 
But, but you shouldn't be out here price gouging, folks, right? Uh, with 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 the with the prices on this medicine, I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But that's just my humble opinion. Y'all can let me know how y'all feel about it in the comment section. And if you've ever been like sticker shocked at the price of one of your medicines before, let me know in the comment section. Get these laws, you're like, okay. So I can see why a big pharma would negotiate and hire lobbyists to go in there to pass the law to extend the patent for 20 years and then figure out other ways. Some of them are extending them for another 29 years, 39 years. Okay, that's dirty. Let's figure out a way to negotiate these policies. What I'm asking about here is okay. these are all the top 10 list of organizations that are the ones that have destroyed America the most, divided us the most, Allegedly. had us fighting against each other. All of these guys hate yeah. the orange chair. So, so, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, so yeah. why, why, okay. why is that? Well, I think there, I, I guess I would say two things. Uh, in my opinion, I think more than anything else, these guys, more than they hate Trump, I think they hate Trump's base more than they hate Trump specifically. And I would argue that because of the war on domestic terror infrastructure being set up expressly to target people in that base and also anyone that has sort of nationalist, uh, a, a nationalist bent, I would guess, I, I, you know. And Trump obviously postures as being nationalist, and I don't think they like that. And, and pushing to bring industry back to the U.S., all of that stuff. The decision was made explicitly by the people who actually run America to move industry out of the U.S. many decades ago. They do not want to bring it back. They don't. And I think um, if you're, if a lot of Who's she talking about when she said the people that actually run America? Let me know who you think she's actually talking about when she said that. A lot of these people, like I mentioned earlier, have this goal of making this global economy. And a lot of that has since been wrapped into uh, Agenda 2030 and the people actually developing those policies. Um, I don't think they want a nationalist guy. There's a there's an effort globally to really vilify nationalism. It doesn't matter if it's Trump. It's also Bolsonaro in Brazil or whatever. Sure. And I don't think you have to like them, but I think the reason they're so against them yeah. is because they want to vilify nationalism. I don't because see if you, I, if I have to choose between nationalism and what's the opposite of nationalism? Globalism. What's, internationalism. Okay, globalism, exactly. International. Sure. If I have to choose between being proud of my heritage, my country, my land, and everybody else around the world, what, give me a good argument no, for I, that being a bad thing. It's, it's about sovereignty, I think, though, at the end of the day. Because when you remove national sovereignty, then the people actually running the show are even more unaccountable. Yeah, yeah so they, they'll <laughs> use nationalism to link it to Germany. But again, so, yeah. so here's what but I want But that's wanted. what has been going on, right? It's bullshit, Trump though. is literally I, Hitler. Putin's if, literally if, if Hitler. If people <laughs> fall for it, they're naive. But, but let's, let's kind of go to this. The closest president I can find to Trump, closest family, I can see to Trump is John F. Kennedy, closest. I think those two to me are very close. Neither one of them have a nice uh, uh, resume. You know, they've done some stuff in the past, well, you sure, know, Kennedy, yeah. all that stuff. But both of them, the people of power, like the Lyndon Johnson, the Hoover, the CIA, sure. those guys hated Kennedy. Totally. Okay. The same people hate Trump. Trump and Kennedy politically, believe it or not, are more similar. But, you know, Kennedy was a proud Second Amendment NRA member today. Kennedy is not a Democrat, but it's a hero to a lot yeah, of Democrats. Yeah, yeah. So what I watch for is the following. So here, here's a question for you, Whitney. The question for you is this. What institution has hurt America that loves Trump? Mm. That's a really interesting question. And I don't think I could think of one. Can you? Let me know in the comment section. But I, I, I don't think I can think of one. Uh, yeah, that would probably take some thinking to do. At least in the U.S., it's pretty clear that by this That's point, a good I question. think you understand what I'm asking. I want really... you to think about it. What institution? What institution that hates America, that's hurt America, loves Trump? I can't even think of one. I want you to think about it because you're you're more able to kind of. See it from the other side. What institution that's hurts um, that has hurt America the last twenty years loves and supports Trump? Wow, that's a crazy question. Not from that from that list that you said from the Fauci. Give me another one. Maybe I'm not thinking about anybody. I can't even. I can't even think of one. Well, yeah. Uh, I can't think of one. 
And I want to say I touched on this in a video a while back um, on, you know, how it just seems like everybody, you know, in the, the, the establishment, the entire establishment is going after this one guy. And the more that they go after him, the more the people want him. Right. It's 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 almost like this 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 opposite effect. The more the establishment goes after Trump, the higher his his ratings go. It, it, it's crazy and it's uh, very very interesting to watch because I think people are realizing what's actually going on, uh, or what we think is actually going on. <laughs> um, so to 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 watch the establishment, you know, the alleged establishment go so hard and it have the opposite effect. It's kind of refreshing. It really is. It, it it really is. And you know, to to that effect, how do you guys think a Trump Kennedy Jr. ticket would go? Let me know. He uh, Kennedy's polling at I want to say like nineteen or twenty percent um, currently. Obviously, Trump is polling much much higher than that. How do you guys think that, would that be like the ultimate unbeatable ticket? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, I, I I would like to hear more from Kennedy. Um, I heard that allegedly he's against the Second Amendment, which I would have some problems with. Um, if that is true. If that is true. I, 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 think, I think it was the Second Amendment. Somebody said something about Kennedy that, he he's for and I, I would just absolutely absolutely uh not vote for him if, if that is the truth but if he checks out if he checks out which from the little bit that i've heard from him he honestly doesn't sound like a democrat he really doesn't in my humble opinion and i listen i, I haven't heard a whole whole lot from him okay i'm gonna um, just put that out on front street but from the little bit that i have heard he doesn't sound like a Democrat, which is kind of weird that he's running as a Democrat. But hey, it is what it is. But how do you guys feel about that ticket? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know. And actually, you know, I'm looking at the comment section of this video we just checked out. And well, shout out to uh, Patrick Bet David, by the way, for the video. Shout out to Patrick. But one of the first comments is, I'm not a Trump guy. But the hatred of the machine towards them really opened my eyes. And I think that's the effect that you're seeing when with, with what I just explained. The harder they push, indictment here, indictment there. Oh, Trump's a terrible person here. Trump's a terrible person there. Oh, we dig up something here. Documents there. J6 this, J6 that. The, the, the more that they push and go after this man, the more the actual people of this nation say oh wait a minute why is everybody going after this one guy something's a little off here like you mean to tell me all of the you know alleged machine is going after this one guy all at the same time i've never seen anything like it and people's eyes are being opened even people who allegedly aren't even trump guys that's the issue that I see uh, going on with or for the establishment, I guess you could say. But as, as always, y'all let me know your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys for tuning in once again. Hit that subscribe button right up over there before you go, if you haven't already. And uh, check out that video right over there, too. Click that. Click it. Click it. Peace and love. I'm out.